Hey, Billy, you know what's awesome? What's that? Going to the video store. Dude, that guitar thing drove me nuts. <laughs> that guitar because I had I had my amp completely tweaked. Like it sounded amazing. <laughs> but every time I record it, it sounded like crap. And I'd move the microphone like like move the mic the microphone's literally been on every surface, every space, the amps angled different ways. And uh finally finally got it and it was just like, Oh my god, because it was I was just like chasing the dragon right there. I was like <laughs> <laughs> So I was like, man, I can play two chords. I just can't record them. So, <laughs> <laughs> but got it done. And uh, awesome. So let's go to the video store. Yeah. Yes. So this is one of those things when uh, when we found out that Stuart Gordon passed away, that um, you know, a lot of our old just standby guys are, are leaving us and a lot of them are leaving way too soon. I mean, to be fair that a lot of them have had some pretty long and storied lives and careers, but you know, just in the last couple of years, we lost Wes Craven and Toby Hooper and um, George Romero, George Romero. And, you know, it's just seems to keep going on and on. And Stuart Gordon while he's not as well known as some of those others, um, his impact, especially on probably new filmmakers, is is pretty pretty substantial. Yeah, I mean, uh, especially with like the Lovecraft Renaissance that's kind of going on now, where everybody's real big into Cthulhu. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he was he was there in '85 doing it. So. Yeah, and that's the thing is you really don't have even the resurgence now. Without that body of work that Stuart Gordon was putting together, I mean these <laughs> these are and I think we've said it before when we were talking these are staple flicks that any horror fan you you should have at least three or four of his movies in your collections. Yes, and or, you know if that if not that then Shutter right now for the uh, for the quarantine is giving away a month free. So if you're not if you're not familiar with Shutter and we don't have anything to do with Shutter, but it's kind of like the horror movie Netflix. Um, and I, after we talked about Stuart Gordon, I was like, okay, well, I want to at least go back and watch Reanimator. Yeah. Maybe if I can find if I can find another one. And looking for Reanimator, it was on Shutter, and Shutter was the first thing that I've seen in forever that was kind of akin to that old video store experience, because they've got all of the cool artwork up, you know. Yeah. Um, it's all, it's all stacked, stacked thumbnail tiles across the screen. So, you know, you see those old video store, uh, stalwarts that, that yeah were just so fascinating when you were a kid. <laughs> and, so anyway. And, and you're right, because talk, talking about even Stuart Gordon here, there's, I can clearly remember picking up Reanimator just because of the artwork on the VHS box. And yes. I mean, come on, you, you know, you, you, you've got him standing there with the, with the syringe and the glowing, you know, serum or whatever it is. And you've got the head on the table, you know, in the, in the, in the, the, the Petri dish or the pan or whatever it is. I mean, hands down, I had to rent this movie. And this is the movie that I remember after watching, after I watched reanimator for the first time, I instantly ejected it went to my neighbor's house and said, you have got to watch this now. <laughs> Dude, I remember, so a buddy, several buddies of mine, this was in the 90s. So like, we're talking about the video store and a lot of the notable video, the, a lot of the tapes. But when, like, so Reanimator came out in 85. So yeah. it had been hitting video stores around 86. So I was like 10, yeah. 10 years old. I wasn't allowed to watch this stuff. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, my, when I was that age, my my horror was whatever my parents happened to be watching that they didn't want to send me to my room about before it finally started getting too rough and they'd send me to my room. Yeah. Um, but at ten years old, I was not watching Reanimator, right? I know you're a couple years older, so you, you was pro you were, at the same time you were probably you know just that perfect age. Sixteen, like, man, straight up sixteen years old. 
fresh, fresh <laughs> driver's license and a copy of, copy of Reanimator. I mean, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, but the thing the thing of it was was um, you know when I got older. So this would have been probably you know early nineties, you know early to mid high school, you know freshman junior, the freshman sophomore high school. Me and some buddies, we went on this kind of horror movie summer where we just like all of those movies that we hadn't seen, we just went and got them. So we like went through all the Fridays, all the Halloweens, all of the nightmares, all of the everything. Yeah. And um, a lot of my horror movie, horror movie scenes, a lot of my having seen horror movies came from that summer. Several of them I've seen multiple times since. Others, not so much. And Reanimator was one of those. But it kind of was lumped in there with all the Evil Deads. Uh, Army of Absolutely. Darkness came out like right around that time. And so I kind of had, for Reanimator itself, I kind of had a kind of a blotchy memory. Hmm. And then watching it again the other night, I was like, I cannot believe that this got muddled in with, with all this. Because this is... <laughs> This is crazy. It's so over like, the top, man. It, it, it's, it's the effects are still pretty fascinating, but it is so outrageous, man. I mean, Evil Dead Two and Reanimator was such a huge influence on me as a horror fan because <laughs> because of the dark humor in it and just the mm -hmm. over the top craziness of it all. Well, and that's the thing with Reanimator is it just it it doesn't get. Nothing ever gets any better. It just continually, yeah. like, 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 just amps up and amps up and amps up and just like up and up and up. And you have little breaks where they're talking about like, well, that was a bad idea. We shouldn't have done that. And they're like, well, let's do it again. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, uh, it's like the know, precursor to uh, to. Uh, uh, well, I didn't forget it. Forget the name of it. <laughs> oh. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's like, well, yeah, it didn't work last time. Maybe I didn't give him enough. Of course he's dead. The dosage was too large. Let's give yeah. him some more. Uh, like, oh, like I, my I, experience. I do have a backup plan. Overdose! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, uh, <laughs> you know, and then the sinner watching it being like, okay, so the whole time he's talking about how it's the, it's the brain stem. Like, that's the source of everything. That's... Yeah. And so he chops off the dude's head, and then for whatever reason he injects just the body with some too. Yeah. Like, like here, well, let's just let's just see what happens with this yeah. dude whose head I just chopped off with a shovel in my basement. Like, what could possibly go wrong <laughs> if this works? I mean, it's not like this was just some random dude. This is like a guy who was like obviously an enemy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But, amazing. Uh, just absolutely amazing. Yes. Uh, <laughs> P poor Barbara Crampton, man. She, yeah. uh, <laughs> yeah, like she, she knows, like in every scene, she's like, I have a bad feeling about this the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> the whole, like from the very beginning, she's like, something's gonna, something bad is gonna happen, and like everything bad happens to her. <laughs> and what's what's amazing <laughs> like, is you really get pulled in with the, with this cast too, man. I mean, the cast of Reanimator is. It's great. It really makes it work. I mean, Jeffrey Combs is a, a force on his own, but mm. with Bruce Abbott, Barbara Campton, I mean, you just you can't help but feel for these people as you're going through this trip and just how crazy, you know, Herbert West is. Uh, oh. it's, it's just one of those lightning in the bottles, man. It, it's it's just it's a perfect, crazy over the top movie. Yeah, well, and then that, that security guard at the morgue, who they post oh, just man. specific, they post that guy <laughs> there to keep Herbert out of there. <laughs> and, and then all the crap goes, and he's like looking in there and watching all the zombies go crazy, and he's just like, I quit. <laughs> he just <laughs> leaves. Well, when, when, when uh, Barbara Crampton's dad <laughs> squishes that head, then he slings it out in the hall, and it splatters on the wall right above the, the security guard's head, and he's like, Yeah, that's what, he's gone. <laughs> he's like, I'm out. <laughs> I quit. <laughs> cool it's just like there's certain things you see and you're just like nope <laughs> he's the only character that has any sense at all really right. <laughs> and, and again if you follow that up and go right into from beyond man the effects in from beyond are still just amazing and what so, a warped movie man 
<laughs> I didn't have a chance to rewatch that. I remember it being oh, bizarre. Um, but one thing that was the one thing about Reanimator was too was just how how bloody it really was. Oh yeah. I mean, there's yeah. a. I mean, they they did not spare any expense on blood. Like yeah. it's everywhere, yeah. and it's all seeping out of mouths and noses and ears. Like. Like Stuart Gordon was not squeamish about blood, or I guess he wasn't worried about violence ratings for his movies yeah. or something. Because, yeah. um, like I said, I was looking for sound effects so that whenever we're done here, I can cut in, and all I could find really was uh, was, was Herbert West introducing himself, and then a whole lot of screaming. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, like, but, uh, like you're saying, from the very beginning, because the guy comes out and his eyeballs blow out of his head. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> you killed him. Yeah. Nope, I gave him life. <laughs> it's like, yeah. okay, what are we in for here? <laughs> yeah, it's like, like, this guy obviously is... He's a medical student. He's, he's not going to pass. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and again, in, in From Beyond, I mean, him carrying over the character, you know, a, a different character, but it's still... You know, Jeffrey Combs playing Jeffrey mm-hmm. Combs. And the fact that, you know, it's about the, 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 the effects of the pineal gland being able to see into another dimension. And, again, I mean, the, you need to revisit that one, man, because those effects I'm... are still just absolutely amazing. And the fact of Jeffrey Combs, you know, because he, you know, does the pineal gland thing and it pokes out of his forehead... In, in his head, all of his hair gets pulled off his body by some kind of weird, weird sandworm that's in his in the basement <laughs> of this house, and then he goes up and sucks Herschel or Herschel, Gordon Stewart's wife eyeball out of her head. I mean, it's just like what more, more and more and more. Like I remember some of those scenes. I just didn't oh, get a chance to watch it recently man. in the last couple of days. Uh, but trust me, um, it, I, it gives Reanimator I'm, a run for its money, man. It's really up there. I'll, well, dude, I've got that. I've got that Shutter subscription, so I'm going to be on it as, if uh, if I can manage. It's been a, it's been a strange couple of days here. I've got my uh, one of my little ones is a little bit sick, oh, and no. well, she she's not she's not uh, she's not ill. She's had a little cold, yeah. but um, so the uh, where our TV hangs, right directly behind it, is the doorway to the hallway, and then her her bedroom, like all the bedrooms of the house, are are directly so we had a problem when she was little and that she would come in behind us like we're facing this way looking at the tv she would come in behind us and sneak watch shows with we didn't know that she was there so she saw some stuff she shouldn't have seen when she was like four years old like right. monsters and stuff you know we were watching yeah. the walking dead you know and um so i'm sitting there watching reanimator and it was the table scene with barbara crampton <laughs> and that that door slides open because we've got a little pocket door that door slides open i couldn't hit the remote slow fast enough i'm just like oh my god and like turn off the tv and like what and she's like what's all that noise and i was like you just get back in bed because you have no you, you don't even need to be in the same room with this movie right i'm very disappointed in you. You steal the secret of life and death, and here you are, trysting with the bubble-headed co-ed. You're not even a second-rate scientist. <laughs> oh, man. And, uh, so, uh, but... I mean, so, yeah, so, uh, so, uh, so I haven't... Other flicks, too, man. I mean, you know, you've, you've got Dolls, which is kind of a cult classic now. Which I remember it? dolls quite vividly. Like I, that was that's one of those ones that I always think of as kind of a, uh, whenever Toy Story came out, like the original Toy Story, I was like, oh, this is kind of like a good guy's version of dolls. <laughs> <laughs> so way way my mind works is comparing everything through that horror lens. Right. But, uh... <laughs> and I, I really like Stuart's <sighs> version of uh, the Pit and the Pendulum as well. I thought that was very well done too. So uh, yeah, man, I, I I like a lot of Stuart. Stuart Gordon stuff. Uh, it's it's kind of a kind of a tragedy, man. But you know what? It, we're 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 bound to lose them, man. We're no spring chickens, so we're getting right. stuff there too. So uh, you know, I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that you know I, I'm so afraid we're going to hear about Argento falling out or 
You yeah. Because he's I just hope he, everybody he hasn't looked healthy every, in thirty years, you know. <laughs> no. And then you got Clive Barker who's been yeah. who's had health problems. Battling everything, just, yeah. John Carter, so, yeah. you know. Well, you know, we were we were talking about the video store and I you know, this is one of those things, you know, sit back kids because there there are no more video stores. Yeah. And everything is on demand, you know. And um but that's not how it used to be. Like it used to be this place that you would go and, you know, sometimes they smelled like popcorn and sometimes they didn't, you know, but you, you'd go up there and new releases, you know, maybe, maybe it was a, uh, another Stuart Gordon movie, maybe a honey, I shrunk the kids or something like that. Right. Yeah. But, uh, you know, like you go up on, on a on a Friday night and look for movies. And if you were a teenager, you had your buddies with you and you, you'd go to the horror aisle. And if, if you were 10 year old me, that's where you spent your time was the horror aisle. Because those movies you couldn't watch and movies that you would regret having watched at that age anyway. It would have just scared the bejesus out of you for, for having done it. But the, 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 the VHS cases all had a story behind them. Yeah. And they were absolutely just hypnotic. Like just, I remember staring at the backs of certain videos, video cases and just being like, what is this about? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And probably the one for me anyway, that's probably cause I was like, okay, so was, there's a lot of these, you know, I made a, just a whole big list, but um, for me, the one, cause it would have been right at my age was uh, Friday the 13th part five. Yeah. So, and the reason Friday part five was because first of all, it had that big glowing hockey mask on the front, right. you know, it kind of catches your eye. And it was also just came out. So it was a new release, right? So they had posters up in the store, but when you turn it around, there's a, there's a little tiny picture of, uh, was it junior yeah. on the motorcycle yeah. and the machete's halfway through his neck. <laughs> like it's, it's already halfway through it. Like hasn't, hasn't cut the head off completely but it's on its way through just a total action shot yeah. and i used to stare at that and just think like i wonder what it looks like in there you know what i mean <laughs> like, like like lydia deets and beetlejuice like are all you bloody guts and pus under there you know <laughs> like and, uh, it was like so so that was one but man yeah you just you stand there in the horror section and stare at videos and wonder what what's going on yeah. in here you would you, know? you would stand there longer, picking up boxes and flipping them over and reading. You would spend more time picking out one than you would spend the time actually watching the movie that you picked. Absolutely. <laughs> well, and that was another one because I was always, even at that age, I was always a big fan of rock and roll, you know. And at that, in my in my uh, in my youth, we were much more uh, small town Southern Baptist Church, you know, members and the satanic panic was a big deal. Oh, so yeah. Like all, all that devil music, right? Oh, well, yeah. Well, then what what was to land right in the middle of the video store was Trick or Treat. Trick or Treat, man. <laughs> and old Sa Sammy Kerr, you know? And uh, just that, that demonic looking, you know, hell spawn dude with that font, you know, that guitar, just like everything's on fire. And it's just yeah. like, oh, man. What is happening? Here? Perfection. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't really have to see the movie to get to get one hundred percent what the movie's about by looking at that cover. Like that to me was just yep. like, and it wasn't too long after that that like, because I I know that like Motley Crue and other bands were were really they were happening at that time, but I was still a little young to be in the scene. But um, you know, it was only a couple years later that. Uh, that Guns N' Roses really broke, and I got real, real like, like I really don't care. I don't, I don't care. I'll, uh, I, it's like, if if the devil were to call me up right now and say, "Hey, you want to switch places with Slash?" I'd be like, "Yes." <laughs> <laughs> Where do I sign? Uh, <laughs> yeah, when when Trick or Treat came out, man, that was my time period. I was that age. I was, you know, I so identified with Ragman, Skippy. You know, that was my movie. And the and I just mentioned this earlier on, on somebody was showing that, you know, talking about the soundtrack. It's, a, it's my favorite soundtrack ever. 
I have went through it's... so many copies of that cassette when I was a kid. <laughs> I, I mean, I know I went through three cassettes for sure. And of course now, you know, with digital, it, it never deteriorates. So mm-hmm. yeah, man, it was, it was perfection for me. Uh, I actually saw that in the theater. So, uh, you know, yeah, I've got several different copies of it here. I can't say that they're all legal, but <laughs> that's one that's kind of hard to find. I think I think I listened to your uh, uh, the, yeah. to your show about House it, talking about how it was like uh, uh, wrapped up in legal problems. So yeah. there you, it, it's hard to find uh, legal copies of it, or even just streaming or available. And it's all about the so, band. You know, the band won't release them the, the the rights to use the music. In a movie that they already had the rights to use it in. So it's kind of a weird situation. But, you know, hey, more power to you, Fastway, even though you're not a band anymore. And everybody that started the band are pretty much all dead. So wow, it's a weird, <laughs> weird situation. Yeah. So a big big one for me is uh, I didn't get to see Texas Chainsaw till much later on. But in the early days of video where you had the boxes setting up, that media version of Texas Chainsaw... Where it was mm-hmm. him, it was a like an artist drawn picture of him standing, and you had the you know the girl's eyes behind him. That yeah. picture haunted me in my youth <laughs> because the name, for one thing, it was already right. infamous, right? And then then you take this picture, and it's just so ingrained in my head that and the Phantasm poster, which was the cover of the box for it back in the day. So I got a little story for that. Uh, some girls that lived next to me decided they were going to have, going to have a sleepover. And I was good <laughs> friends with the girl. And she said, we want you to go and pick us out some scary movies because you tend to know more than we do. <laughs> I got them Phantasm and uh, Dr. Butcher MD. <laughs> <laughs> but I totally picked Phantasm because I wanted to see it because I'd always been looking at this box, you know. And I was just blown away by it. And, of course, Phantasm is absolutely one of my favorite movies ever. And uh, But those are totally because of the box. Um, I always think of the... The, co- box, the, box, the box is sold that's, movies, That's man. what did it, it sold man. rentals, that's for sure. It. Yeah. So I think of uh, Company of Wolves. Man, when I saw mm-hmm. that on the cover, instant. I grabbed it. I was, I was going to watch it because... That's where the company of wolves is that the one where the the wolf is sticking its nose out of the dude's mouth? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 That's and that's I was, epic. I was kind of disappointed in the movie overall back then because hello, I'm the reanimator guy, right? <laughs> I well, want the over the top stuff, but in hindsight, it's a very very well made movie. See, I think I saw the movie one time for the same reason. Saw you know, but I don't was not very memorable. Um, for me, it's always going to be American Werewolf in London, oh, yeah, which is strange, yeah. because because American Werewolf in London does not have a very great cover. It's just no. two dudes looking over their shoulder, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. um, you know. And there's so, some that were that that the covers really deliver the movie inside really delivered, and others not so much. Absolutely. You know, it's like Chud, Chud, Chud <laughs> looked awesome. Chud sucked. <laughs> you know. <laughs> like, <laughs> Uh, what about Chud Two, Bud the Chud? <laughs> well, right, the, but like the the Evil Dead Two, that was one that always got me because yeah, of the eye, too. the eyes inside the skull. Yeah, right. Like skulls aren't supposed to have eyes. You know <laughs> what I mean? And it's like, and I also I don't remember going to the video store. I always remember seeing the, the cover for Evil Dead Two, but not for the first one. Right. So it's yeah. like, okay, well I can't watch the second one without seeing the first one. Right. Um, saw the first one at a friend's house. He had a copy that he recorded off of HBO or something. And, right. Like, that was the first time I saw Evil Dead. And I'm like, okay, you know, and I saw Evil Dead 2. And the same, you know, it's like the reaction everybody gets like, I've seen this before. Right. It's just like, like well, dude, did you, you recorded, we were watching Evil Dead 2, not Evil Dead 1, like the same movie. So have I told but, you, have I told you my Evil Dead 2 story or Evil Dead story on that? Uh, maybe I've listened to a lot of your shows, well, <laughs> but specifically, specifically telling me, I don't know. Maybe. So the copy that we had of evil dead two was on a blank cassette. Somebody recorded it. I didn't know what it was. It cut the beginning off of it. So you don't see what the title of it is. And I just found the tape. I'm watching it and it starts right when they come out of the tunnel in the car. So they're going to mm-hmm. the cabin 
and it's Evil Dead Two, man. I mean, I'm and I'm again. It's one. Of, it's the same situation with Reanimator. I took it to a friend's house for a sleepover. And said we're watching this movie tonight. I don't know what it is, <laughs> but it's insane. <laughs> and we watched that thing three times over the weekend. And I don't know. Probably four years later, pay per view. It was a big thing, right, on satellite, and they, right. they show Evil Dead. I start watching it, and I'm like, holy crap, this is the same dude that was in that crazy movie that I saw. And I still didn't <laughs> know it was Evil Dead 2, even though I had seen the box, but I never flipped it over and saw the back to realize right. this is... And so it took me a long time to figure out that Evil Dead 2 was Evil Dead 2. I'd just seen this crazy, whacked-out movie where the dude fights his hand, you know. Right. <laughs> Well, and that was the thing, because uh, Scott and I, and it's been since we did the Evil Dead series, it's been a year and a half, two years, but we, we did Fresh Eyes, and the rules of Fresh Eyes were you have to watch the movie like you've never seen it before. So get rid of all of your, yeah. your, your fan love and just watch it and report on it. Like, what, what were your impressions? Like, did it? Did it hold up? Was it scary? Does it really, is it really worth all of the, the love that it gets? And so like, you know, evil dead, the first one was a true horror movie. Yeah. Like it had a few little side, you know, little side cracks, but for the most part, it was a serious horror movie. Right. Evil dead two was the same movie with a whole bunch of jokes inserted, but, um, and then army of darkness, they just completely, they just completely took the top <laughs> off and let all the crazy out. I mean, there's just no, um, you know, there's just like it makes no. I mean, it makes perfect sense, but it's just like. So I, saw, <laughs> I saw that one. In, saw that one in the theater, and it, it seemed like the homie went, went by in like twenty minutes. It seemed like it just went so fast, and I was just well, going, "What the heck is going on here?" Yeah, it's, <laughs> It, it's just slapstick and funny yeah. and crazy and you know it's just uh but yeah that evil dead 2 man that if it you never saw any of the movies yeah that cover for evil dead 2 where it's just the skull with the eyeballs is so memorable you just like you can't like you don't you don't know what's behind that that could be the greatest movie ever or the worst movie ever yep. it's one of the greatest but you know what i mean it's like and then you get basket case oh yeah you know, like, what? That's... So, yeah, I mean, the designers of these movies just really, the the, the the boxes, and even even into the mainstream stuff, you know, you look at, like, the, the paintings for Indiana Jones and Absolutely. the Goonies and yep. all, all of that stuff, you know, even though, like, the, the epic Star Wars posters and stuff, like, it, video was a big deal, yep. which is weird because it's such a bigger deal now, but they, they, like, they just kind of show up a little... Yeah, on, on the screen, you kind of started seeing um, that deteriorate in the '90s because it became every every cover was four or five people profile pictures shaped in a V. <laughs> you know, yep. it seemed like everything. It didn't matter what the movie was, and so the the creativeness of the covers just kind of died. And even now, it's like you just see a trend, and everybody's just doing the same thing. And the '80s, you got such a variety because people were trying to create artwork to make you pick that box up. Yes. And they succeeded. Yes. Because um, that the, the the truth of the matter is, I mean, I'm, you you can you can debate this all the way down the line, but like if you take you take a series like when Scott gave us the stats, like Friday the Thirteenth is one is like the seventh highest money making franchise. Period. Yeah. So. You know, you've got Star Wars and you've got, you know, yeah, every, Friday the 13th is like number seven and it's like <laughs> worth a, it's worth a couple billion dollars, you know? Wow. And if you, if you watch those movies, they're not very well made. No. They're obviously not act well acted, you know, whatever. But, but the thing is what, what really drove those movies was word of mouth, sleepovers, um, probably, probably dares, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, let's watch this scary movie. Are you, you know, are you scared? Like, I'm not scared. And the body and, count, And man. the boxes. Yeah, the body well, count as well, because everything else you had, two or three people getting killed. This thing, you were getting up in the teens of people getting killed, yeah. you know? So, so, and again, you know, 
like Friday, the Friday movies are one that's like, an, it's an easy benchmark for yep. horror because they're so popular because it's yep. everybody knows, but there's none of those. There's none of those. Right. The, the movies, the cinematography, the special effects, none of them are like notable for anything other than the fact that all shoved together, they're awesome. <laughs> you know what I mean? and, and like you said, if, if you mention any one of those movies, the poster art is automatically in your head. You can, yes. you can see it. You don't get confused on which one is which. When I say the final chapter, part four, you see Boom. the picture. I mean, you know exactly what it is. Exactly. That's what it's all about. And then you had, you know, again, like Creep Show, like the oh, just yeah. the comic the comic book art. Yeah. These are just a couple that just stick in my head. Fright Night. Yeah, without you know doubt. that 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 picture of uh, Amanda Biercy on the front with her uh, her jaw wide open and uh, yeah, like fright fright night. I'll have to say, like it's it's, it's a I I've always liked that movie. Like I've loved that. It's a it's a classic. Absolutely. But but it was never one that really scared me. Like it was fun. Yeah. It was cool, but it wasn't very scary. Right, and that's that time that... frame we're looking at right here because kind of the same deal with Reanimator, Evil Dead Two. It had your Rah! kind of jump out moments, grossed you out a little bit, but it was about the roller coaster ride. Mm-hmm. It wasn't about going out and just totally terrifying you like The Exorcist, right? Right. So yeah, I mean, that that's what made these movies the powerhouses that they were, man. Friday the Thirteenth, all those Freddy, Freddy became ah, can't hear me, <laughs> bon appetit, yeah. you know. And, uh, yeah, it, it became pop culture. Exactly. Well, and that's what I'm saying is that the cover for Fright Night is terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> like, like you, you don't know what you're getting whenever you just look. You're like, ooh, that's uh, – what's in that house? It's, that's scary yeah. looking. Right. And, and it's, it's effective, and it made you pick up the box, and it made you take it home, and it made you watch the movie. And I, I, there's so many things, like, that are just – a part of our history of part of our lives that was just because you had the video store, yeah. you know, you go down to the video store and you know, yeah, may, maybe your mom wants to rent pretty woman, but you go take a look through the <laughs> horror right. thing and you'll yeah. like, Hey, can we get monster squad too? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> the howling man, the artwork for the howling always has been one of my favorites. Yeah, I mean, just that, I, you know, that image has always just been one of those. And of course, that's an age thing too, because you're at, you know, I'm probably at 12 years old at that point, and to see mm-hmm. that artwork, wow! I mean, it, it, it's it's is it somebody in pain behind this screen? They're busting through the screen, you know. That that image has always been to me iconic. And uh, so, so what about this? How how about this one? How about movies that you always wanted to rent because of the the the, the artwork? but you never really did back in the day. And you finally catch up to it later on. And you're like, wow, what a piece of crap. <laughs> yeah. There, well, there, there's a few of those. Um, like I said, well, a lot of, a lot of these I caught on like HBO at some point though. Cause it wasn't, or, you know, on, on cable or sci-fi or, you know, ne- maybe not necessarily the, the original edits, but you know, cer- certain movies that, you know, like I did not, I was not a fan of Halloween three. Oh yeah. I, I watched it. I forgot about it. Yeah. Completely forgot about it. Uh, forgot, completely forgot about it. When we started scary dad, Scott and I started talking about Halloween three and he's describing scenes that I've seen, but just couldn't like put together in my head. Yeah. And so then I went and, cause I had a copy of it that I had never even, it was still in the cellophane. I went and, popped it in and watched it and was like, this is Halloween three. <laughs> like, I thought this was a whole other movie. Like I've seen this, but I didn't realize that that was that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so let's see. What's, what's um, like, um, cause I only wrote down the good ones. Oh. Uh, well, what, well what like if, what else you got like, then? What else you got? It, it, Amityville 3D was not a great movie, but the but cover, the was cover awesome. art was in, was fantastic. <laughs> and you flipped it over on the back, and it had that creature coming up and like grabbing the guy's face with his claw. And it's like, I gotta see this. Yes, then, oh yeah, yeah. But that was the only scene worth seeing, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um. Let's see. What was another one that was like D 
didn't didn't get around to watching. Um, well, I saw it later, but like scanners. Oh yeah, like, yeah. With the the, the picture of uh, yeah, like like freaking out. Um, it's a, it's certainly an interesting looking movie that. Um, let's see, you know, Hellraiser. That's just one of those that oh, yeah. kind kind of it's iconic. But but I saw that pretty early on. Like I, th- I think Hellraiser came out in what like eighty eight, eighty nine, something like that. So. Yeah. Um, that was high school for me. So that was just on, on the pile with the rest of them. Yeah. Um, I do, I do remember, um, it was, it was not a rental, but, um, a buddy of mine, I was in like 10th grade, 11th grade and went to go you know, hang out at his house. And, uh, there was a copy of Rocky Horror Picture Show. Ah. And, um, Hey, dude, the title says what it needs to say, right? A Rocky <laughs> Horror Picture. Like, okay, then put that on. And it's like a transsexual musical. And both of us are sitting there. Like, we had actually, I think I was like 13, 14, I was 14 or 15 years old, maybe. And we had actually, somehow, we had scored a six pack of Budweiser Tall Boys. And we were going to watch a horror movie. And we popped that in. And we got about 20 minutes into it. And we were both just like, what the hell is this? <laughs> it's like, I, I, dude, I'm out. <laughs> We're sitting there drinking beer and talking about girls and then watching Tim Curry dance around in lingerie. Like, <laughs> like this was, I was, I was, uh, I was completely lied to. <laughs> um, so I, I remember the box for, Children shouldn't play with dead things, and it drew me to want to watch it. And then after watching, I'm like, yeah. At first, I didn't like it, but over the years, I'm like, okay, I, I get what it is, you know, mm-hmm. for the time. And of course, I end up being a huge Bob Clark fan later on, you know, when you get more of his work. But it's it's movies like that. You you that that box just stayed in your head. There was another one called Abomination as well, that was really grotesque on the cover. And I, think uh, I remember that one. And uh, you know, not good movies, but the 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 artwork just made you, you know, mm-hmm. have to have to check these things. Oh, uh, City of the Living Dead, which back then was called Gates of Hell. Uh, okay, Lucio, I remember Lucio that Pulci. one. And you had that skull with the eyes over the city, you know, kind of mm-hmm. hanging there, it's like eating the city or whatever. Oh man, that thing! You talking about something that got rented a lot. <laughs> <laughs> the, the drill going through the dude's face and the girl, you know, with the intestines coming out of her mouth. That was, that's where I discovered Italian horror. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the, man, the Italians just kick everything up a notch, don't they? <laughs> yeah. The, you know, that, that gore level, they were doing what we were talking about with Reanimator, how over the top the gore is, which, but they were doing it in 80 and 81. So they were just ahead of the curve. They're really, you know, we just kind of caught up with them. But yeah, I mean, well, again, zombie, Fulci zombie. I mean, that cover, you know, dude, iconic. Yeah, well, the movie itself with the, I mean, yeah, the eyeball scene is what everybody knows. Yeah, dude, freaking zombie eating a shark. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, okay. where okay, else so you gonna you, see that? Like, like, you you don't see that, and you got to think about like and I, again, it's not a it's not we live in a litigious society that didn't exist back then, but you're like you're telling your actor, your stuntman, whatever. It's like that was a tiger shark. Okay, those things are notoriously dangerous yeah. animals, yeah. and that's a big shark. You know, right. <laughs> and you're just like, hey, go swim over there to that thing, and and bite it. And see what, and like, let's just see what, see what happens. happens. You know, it's like, just roll with it. <laughs> this is just in, pure insanity. It is so great. But, uh, <laughs> what about, uh, you got any like action flicks or something that you rented just because? I mean, I remember Invasion USA, man, when, when I saw the cover of Chuck with those guns. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, you know, well, to, dude, that, like, that almost. It's funny because action flicks and cop shows from the eighties kind of almost influence my modern gun purchases, yeah. right? Like, so um, I'm not a real big gun guy, but I live in Texas and I got a few, right? So yeah, my uh, this is 
oh man, like 12, 13 years ago now, my brother-in-law comes over to my house one day. He's not my brother-in-law at the time. He's just a buddy of mine. He comes over, he'd been to a gun show and he's like, hey, check this out. He opens up a box, just bought a brand new gun. It's a Beretta. Looks like the the uh, Riggs, yeah. Riggs is a gun from Lethal Weapon. Right. Like, oh, sweet. That's awesome. So what Colin's MO is he'll buy a weapon, he'll use it for a while, decide he wants something else, sell whatever he's got for like half of what he bought it for. Right. And so then I end up on the, on the, on the buying side of just collecting all kinds of cool stuff that, <laughs> that, um, that I've eventually like I've rolled out, you know, I don't have a, a tremendous amount of stuff, but like I still have that Beretta and um, it's kind of a pain in the ass cause it's the old style. So it doesn't have like, it's got a rounded uh, uh, barrel instead of a rail. So you can't put a light on it. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's a functional weapon. Like I'm not complaining about it. Like, but if you're, if you're like, Oh, okay. You want to go tactical, like the zombie apocalypse we're right now, we're in the middle of the global pandemic. You're like, okay, I might want something that just has yeah. a few more bells and whistles, Sure. but I won't, I won't part with this thing. I've got, I've got a leather shoulder holster for it and everything. Like I'm going, I'm going full on like eighties, nineties on, on this thing, but like, dude, the action movies. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Action flicks, sci-fi flicks. I mean, I think about the cover of Runaway, Tom Selleck, you know, Gene Simmons. Yeah, uh, instant I, rental. <laughs> Escape from New York. Oh, yeah. The the, the, the broken Statue of Liberty. Like, yeah. no, you can't do anything. Like, there, there's no way to make something more awesome than having a, a, a decapitated Statue of Liberty head just sitting in the middle of the street. You know, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, right. of course, and that that's John Carpenter and Kurt Russell. So that's just a winning team anyway. Yeah. But if even if it wasn't, you'd still rent that movie. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like it's just, um, All the ninja flicks, you know, Return mm-hmm. of the Ninja, Ninja 3. I mean, Bloodsport. I mean, you those images just pop in your head instantly when you just say the name. Yes. And and. and I was gonna I was gonna ask you before you segue into action movies because yeah I mean Die Hard have you seen, oh, yeah. have you seen the movies that have you seen the movies that made us yeah like the early reviews for for Bruce Willis not Die Hard <laughs> but Bruce Willis before before they recut a couple of scenes and they hadn't even finished making the movie but the early reviews were bad so they cut him out of the poster right and put put the building he's the high highest paid actor in hollywood and they remove him from the poster and yeah. and replace him with a building because he's getting panned as an actor i'm like oh man can you imagine like Crazy. I, like it, like getting getting that payroll that he was getting for for die hard like okay you're set for life you never really have to work again right yeah. you make one movie it's like winning the lottery. You're just in, you're out, you do some TV, you, you just do Call whatever it. you need to do, but you, you're, you're paid. <laughs> and, um, but then to be like, uh, I think my career is over after, after this <laughs> at the like same that. time. Cause you gotta be not biting some nails being like, please, 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 please. But yeah, there's, there's so many, so many good ones. And then again, I was going to say, I think the, when you're talking about moving into the nineties, like kind of what, where was the fall off? I think the fall off too came with a lot of, uh, maybe we can blame grunge. You know, it was like the world kind of became a little bit more self-conscious and kind of more yeah. like, I don't know. Cause I was, I, you know, I was a teenager in the nineties and I was part of that scene, but I also remember when scream came out, they were making fun of horror movies. And I was like, the only the only character in that whole movie I identified with was uh, Jamie Kennedy. Yeah, because he's a, he's like the video store clerk nerd that knows all the horror movies, and I'm like, I'm that guy. Yeah, I know, I know everything <laughs> he just said. <laughs> yeah, I know I know what he's talking about. So um, it's all self and that's Wes Craven too. So I, yeah. I mean, Scream was not a bad movie, but it just kind of got to where it was more like self aware and. But it kind of reshaped where it was heading from there. So I mean, it it's still delivered because it was really getting stale and uh you know it was necessary but it just seemed like the artwork for everything back then just got real real simple i mean you can take 
the cover of, I don't know, the Skulls, and it's almost the same cover as Halloween 6 or 7 or whatever uh-huh. one you want to pick. It's the same format of the faces turn over their shoulder looking back at the camera and, you know, you know. All that stuff. Yeah, so. it, 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 it seemed like it got lazy. Yeah. Like, may, like, may, like maybe they were like, hey, you know, people will rent it regardless. You don't have to have as good of a of a hook. Well, it's almost a but, thing of you, you didn't focus on it having a star. You focused on here's a group of people that you can possibly identify with because Scream did so well. Yes, that, there was a lot of those ensemble horror movies, but, you know. I cracked the joke with, uh, geez, I don't know which which show I was on at the time. It's like, <laughs> you know, you know had, had had 80s horror that was like, you know, it's like a bull coming out of the of the shoot at a rodeo. It's like it's like blood and guts and cussing. Yep. And boobs. And boobs. Yep. Like that's what boom. You have. And it was a winning formula because it like I read an article that's talking about Friday the Thirteenth and it's like. If they had a good opening weekend, they greenlit the next movie. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't care what it was about. They didn't care yeah. about following the story. It's just like as soon as they released it, boom, people were in the theaters. Cool, make another one. Yep, and and have it out within like a year. Like just let's make it make it happen. Whereas now everything's so so like wrapped up in statistics and you know what? worried worried about like i'm i'm sure that they were they were that was wrapped up in statistics but the at least a lot of these movies were fun directors were allowed to experiment there was a lot of stuff that was just kind of maybe swept under the rug or kind of ignored because yeah. they're just like screw it screw it it makes money right. make it which is really where i kind of checked out a lot of them too i mean i know we're getting kind of off the subject but usually when you get past the third movie or so in anything it's really lost its way, and they're saying, we need to try something different. Well, no, you need to do what got you here. <laughs> right. You know, because they always end up running off, and it goes off to some far, crazy, whacked-out thing, and then they always try to pull it back to the original story eventually, you know. Yeah, and, they try to reboot it. Yeah, so it's just like, you don't have to go that crazy with it. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know, after, uh, oh, I mean, the fifth Friday the 13th, I was just, I was insulted when it came out. You know, <laughs> I was. It's got some of the best kills in it ever of any. Of I just them. watched that. I, I watched that not too long yeah. ago. Whenever, whenever I couldn't talk and I was home from work yeah. for a month before I was home for work from a month. Um, but uh, I, yeah, I, like, I, I like was home all, alone. Like all Kids the characters, were... I just don't like it not being Jason. You know, it's just like, well, the... you know, what's the point? <laughs> well, well, the point is, part four did a had a great opening and they said make another one and they're right, like well exactly. we, we, yeah. C- Corey Feldman completely <laughs> turned Jason's face and in, like into his entire skull into hamburger <laughs> um so what are we supposed to do they're you, like we you, don't care you, you jump straight to part six is what you do <laughs> well, well and, and and it's like what imagine yourself as a screenwriter right you're a screenwriter and you're like you get a you get an order you know it's like you get a a phone call Right. Like, yo, I'm I'm the honcho at Paramount, and yeah. we you're you're making our next Friday the Thirteenth movie. Kill as many people as you want, have as much boobs as you want. You've only got two rules. I need it out by summer, and Jason Voorhees is dead. Click. <laughs> and you're like, exactly. Oh, it's kind of like okay. It's, it's kind of like picking on the guys <laughs> that are the substitute guys in Kiss, right? Oh, right. they're just they're just pretenders. Yeah, but if you were off the job, wouldn't you do it? <laughs> Right, yeah, so of course you would take that yeah. job. So you know, yeah. it's like you're a screenwriter. You're like, okay, not Jason, but looks like Jason. They're like, go with it. But okay. it's just sometimes it's such a it's it's kind of like well, scream, scream too. You know, well, mm-hmm. I'm the, I'm the mom of the killer from the first movie, and this is just some random guy that wanted to help me kill people. Oh, yeah. okay, so, yeah, sit down before Man. you fall down. You know. <laughs> Well, like I said, there's a special place in my heart for Friday the 13th 5 oh, yeah. because of the video store. Sure. The video store experience. Um, hey, it made me rent it, you know? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, and, and what what's funny to me is, like, because you and I were at the same Frightmare with the Jason uh, reunion for the mm. Friday the 13th. Yeah. And I felt bad, dude, because Tom Morsha was not getting as much love as everybody else. And I'm yeah. like... 
I like, dude, I'm I'm a fan of of part five. It's not my favorite by far, but yeah. like, I'm certainly not gonna like heart, harsh on the stunt man who <laughs> 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 who played fake Jason in, in a few scenes. You know, like like yeah, no, you're you're part of you're part of the the, the, the series, so you're on the mask. Sure. Like, <laughs> yeah. and, I, and I get that. It, it's not his. Hey, he got the gig. You know. <gasps> yeah. So, well, I think because I'm looking at my timer, yeah, and we wanted to keep these things to about 45 minutes, and we're at about <laughs> we, 50. We blew that, and uh, <laughs> I, I've got to add some sound effects. So, you know, hey, that's that's what this thing turns into. So, but um, you got any final thoughts on the video store other than asking them to please come back because oh, we need them? It was just it was the best time for me. I mean, I spent a lot of time. It was like. You know, what kids have access to now with the internet is kind of like what the video store was for us back in the day. And you only had an image to go by. Uh, again, I always reference it to being a KISS fan and growing up, and you only saw pictures of KISS. You never actually got to see them perform live, mm -hmm. so you imagined what it was you were going to be seeing. Well, these boxes for VHS, that's exactly what this was. You would flip it over, see two or three shots, You'd see on the back of Ghoulies, you'd see the guy with the real long tongue wrapping his tongue around his neck. <laughs> and you're like, oh my God, I got to see that. And then you yeah, go, I, I got to know what happened in here. Oh man, the sword <laughs> the sword and the sorcerer, you know, when you got the, the big, you know, it's Richard Mole standing up there over the top of him. He's got the three bladed sword on the cover. You got to rent that crap, man. <laughs> you know? Well, even, even a movie like Crawl. Oh, Crawl is like fantastic. Yes. The movie was like really dark and really long, and as a kid, it was really confusing. But you had to watch it because yeah. of that that the, that uh, the, the glaive. glaive. Yeah, <laughs> the glaive and, yeah. and the, the 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 you know the just the, again the artwork, the cover of it. You're sucked in. Hey, it's a princess, a dude. He's got the glaive and that creature in the background. I'm sold. Done. I'm in. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll watch this right now. Well, awesome, man. Well, I think that does it for the video store. I'm looking at the clock. It's about 9.15, so this is where we have to lock the doors of the video store, go to the back room, and <laughs> th throw up a movie on the big screen. So what do you think you're watching tonight? A little, uh, little Amber Lynn, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to say that those, those, uh, those performers must be hurting from this whole social distancing thing. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> They're all like, <laughs> well, awesome, man. Well, let's uh, let's close this one down, and we will see you next week. Adios. Uh...